In the known universe, there is no place quite like this. I'm at the headquarters for Stern Pinball in Melrose Park, Illinois, the world's only pinball machine factory. Join me as I tour inside the imaginations of the best pinball designers and find out how they applied their methods to this bumper-driven madness. Then watch as I man the flippers, pull the plunger, and put my hands on history. Hazelton. Welcome to Hands-On History. The pinball machine is a keepsake of true Americana. It's a classic reminder of a nation's fondness for pop culture and amusing challenges. Every year, the Stern Pinball Company near Chicago produces thousands of new machines for sale around the world. Using air tools and custom fabricated materials, I'm going to help build a new game from the bumpers up. You'll see one of these uniquely American inventions begin life as an idea, then take shape as a prototype. From there, we'll go into production, adding the plungers, targets, spinners, ramps, and customized features that keep pinball fans coming back for more. Now, the best pinball games come from great pinball minds, folks that are dedicated to preserving this piece of Americana. Now, while it's true that some of those designs begin on the back of a napkin, most of them really evolve using a computer, with computer-assisted or CAD design. This is uh, someone who does that a lot. Hey, Pat, how are you? Hi, Ron. <laughs> So uh, you're working on uh, actually a game that uh, is in development here, or actually is, is a working game right now? That's right. This is Ripley's Believe It or Not Pinball. Pat brings his pinball dreams to life on the computer, where his designs outline every machine down to the last detail. We have to make the game difficult enough for the player that he's interested in staying there and getting better and better and better and better with the, with the, the piece of equipment. There are more than 3,500 parts in every pinball machine, and the CAD design must be electronically and mechanically engineered so each part performs in coordination with the overall scheme. Each feature, from the bumpers to the magnetic ball stoppers, is positioned so that it can provide a specific reaction to the random action of the ball. The game designer wants the player to gradually learn how to score maximum points. To do this, the play field offers enticing hints about where to shoot the ball. Lights flash, buzzers sound, and players are pointed the way to a top score, if they have fast reflexes and good ball control. The whole shooting match is controlled by a microcomputer. Within milliseconds of a ball striking a bumper or hitting a target, the computer responds, setting off an electrical chain of events that feeds power into a wire coil. These coils are connected to tiny steel rods, and the electrical current coming through the coils causes the rods to move. It's this basic movement that powers the action on the play field, from the bump of the bumpers to the drop of the targets. Before a machine goes into full production, a series of prototypes called Whitewoods are constructed by hand inside Stern's pinball laboratory. So this is the lab where the mad pinball scientists hang out here, right? Eh? This is the lab where we build all of the prototypes prior to production. Very neat. And this is what looks to me like kind of a later stage prototype? This is the final Whitewood for Ripley's Believe It or Not pinball. So it's got everything here except the art. Right. Okay. You want to try it? You can be a pinball game designer or tester. This is okay. So in, in, if you were testing this out right now, what would you be looking for? Uh, I, when, you're, when you make a shot, is, are there bad bounces that are happening in the game? Uh, when you miss a shot, where does the ball uh, end up? There you go. Now what you've just done is you've seen that that outer shot works, it flows very smoothly. So you, the, you really test this game from the player's perspective. I mean, how much do you actually play this game in this development stage? Every game designer plays the game from conception through final hundreds of hours over the course of development. After the game designer works out all the kinks on the whitewood, 
The blueprint is ready for production, which I kick off by routing my wooden play field. In pinball's early history, this was a time-consuming process. Workers spent hours using templates hand routing every play field. Today, Pat Lawler's computer-assisted designs are programmed into an automatic routing machine. So this is the flank or the panel that you begin with? Yes. So what do you, what do you, what's your first step? First step is just to slide it against both the boards. Okay. Second thing you have to do is just press the button to turn on the vacuum, which will hold this piece on the table. And after that, just press the start button. So the vacuum's gonna suck it down. Of course. The routing bit and blank piece of wood come together with the bit moving one direction and the board moving another. These movements work in tandem to complete the routing as quickly and efficiently as possible. The automated router does in 10 minutes what used to take hours to complete by hand. Well, this is our play field so far. You can kind of think of this as the bottom of the pinball machine. The CNC router has cut out these openings. Some of them have had plastic inserts put in. The whole thing has then been sanded and has a coat of clear lacquer. Now, they call this a whiteboard at this point because there's no color on it. That's going to change very quickly. This is Rosario. Hi. Oh, yeah. So you're going to use a, a hand silk screening process to lay down uh, several colors on this, starting with, I guess, white. Eh? Right. Would you let me try this? Sure, you can. So just kind of walk me through it, Rosario. I really, I've never done this before. And run this way. So I'm just spreading the ink out right now, right? Yes. It's not going through right yet. We're just spreading it out. Right there. Okay. Now, now lower this. Put it down. Lower. Now it's in contact, right? Yes. Now take this right here. Uh huh. And the other hand over there. All right. And drag it back. Little bit, little bit. Now push down. Push down and go. Push a little more. So we're actually pushing the ink through the screen yes. and onto the board. Yeah. So right in here, <laughs> yeah. I didn't push hard enough. Yes. And we can, because it didn't go all the way through. Okay. This takes a real touch, doesn't it? You got it now. I got it? You got it. Okay. Yep. Now, so let's take it this out. out. Hey, my first so screen pinball board. The fabric on a silkscreen frame can be nylon, silk, or certain types of polyester. Whatever the material, it's pulled tight around a frame, sort of like a canvas stretched for painting. Silkscreening is a color-by-color -color layering process, requiring four different screens for the basic cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Well, we've completed the basic routing of the playfield. Now we're ready to electrify our machine with an entire half mile of wire. We'll literally plug in the fun when we return to Hands-On History on the History Channel. Welcome back to Hands-On History. Over the years, many features have been added to the basic pinball machine. Here at Stern Pinball near Chicago, the plunger and the steel alloy ball are still part of the mix. But what about those extras, like the dot matrix readout and the talking shrunken head? Who are you calling shrunken? Whatever the feature, they all receive power through an intricate electrical system made of a half mile of wire. After a game designer has worked out the exact placement of bumpers, spinners, and ramps on the whiteboard, a customized wiring scheme is designed. This scheme is plotted out on a series of boards. The wiring staff uses an automatic wire dispenser to measure off exact lengths and types of wire. Each strand is then threaded through a wiring board. At this point, one crossed wire can result in a pinball malfunction. A bumper with no juice won't bump, and a spinner disconnected from the electronic scoring system just spins for the heck of it. Once the wiring board is complete, the wires are bound together to form what are known as cables. These cables and the components they power are light years beyond what you used to find underneath the game's play field. The game of pinball dates back to the 18th century in a European game played on a bagatelle table. As in pocket billiards, players used cues and tried to sink balls into a set of holes for points. Then, in 1871, the steel spring was invented. 
This led to the creation of the pinball plunger, and with the start of the 20th century, machines like bingo and rollerball became mainstays of barroom entertainment. The next true leap forward for pinball came in 1933 when Harry E. Williams, considered the Thomas Edison of pinball, introduced electricity to the game. In addition to making pinball more exciting, Williams also used electricity to keep players from cheating by pushing the machines around until the ball rolled their way. I was afraid that would happen. Now the basic tilt mechanism hasn't changed since Harry Williams invented the tilt bob in this older 1960s machine. I can show you how that works. Inside here is this metal bob hanging inside the ring. Now once the machine is moved, if that bob contacts the ring, it completes an electrical circuit, the machine shuts down, game over. The tilt bob is just one of thousands of hardware parts powered by the machine's wiring cables. Before the play field can advance down the assembly line, technicians must line up the exact placement of the game's many features. Once installed, each of these features will be powered by individual wires bound within the wiring cables. Now here's a silkscreen play field all ready to go. Now just a little bit further down the line here, several components are going to be attached to the back of this, scores of them, brackets, screws, T-nuts, and so forth. So before that happens, we have to decide exactly where those are going to be positioned, and that's the job of this machine right here. It's called the pants press. I think you'll see why in just a second. If you look in here, though, you'll see that there are a number of very small pins, pointed pins, sticking up. So the idea is we're going to load this into the machine. Victor, this is your machine, right? The other side. The other way? Yeah, like yeah, this? Like, that. like this? Mm -hmm. OK. And uh, we slip it up in here? Yep. Yeah. How do you know it's in the right spot here? Oh, I because see, there's some the pilot, the... Yeah, I see the pins over there, all right? This is the uh, start switch? Yeah, both, both pins. So you, you got to have both hands both on here, that way they're not in there, yeah. okay? Here we go, three, two, one. So this is probably why they call it the pants press. If you put a pair of pants in there along with the play field, you'd get a good pressing job. Now watch, when I take this out, if you look at the back of this, you'll see all of these dots right here. Those are small indentations and each one of those will receive some kind of a screw or bracket. From the pants press, the plotted play field moves down the assembly line on a cart. Bracing parts and other pieces of the undercarriage are attached. Then the play field is flipped over and the board is transformed into a three-dimensional world of its own. Stern Pinball contracts with outside producers who mold and construct the various playfield features to match the game setting, be it Middle Earth or outer space. As the cart moves down the line, everything is attached using sophisticated air tools. They help make short work of tasks once sluggishly performed with individual turns of a screwdriver. While the play field is being constructed, other workers are simultaneously building the upper and lower cabinets. And it's in the lower main cabinet that you mount the all-important flippers. Flippers not only make pinball a more entertaining pastime, they also make it harder to argue that pinball is a game of chance. Believe it or not, in 1942, playing pinball was illegal in New York City. Mayor Fiorello LaGuardia and other pinball prohibitionists likened the game to slot machines as they smashed them in the glare of popping flashbulbs. Let the gamblers, racketeers, and gangsters take notice that they have to keep away from New York from now on. In 1947, the Gottlieb Company introduced Humpty Dumpty, the world's first pinball machine with flippers. And with flippers keeping the ball in constant circulation, the pinball play field began to evolve. So where did it go from here? Um, this game is a spinning card, a, a, a card game uh, from uh, 1969. A couple flippers, but small, still the small size, not what we use today, but facing the right directions. Pop bumpers, drum unit scoring up here. The game has progressed. As more features were added over the years, game builders tried to make pinball something that appealed to amateurs and experts alike. 
we have a lot of toys and mechanical devices that that casual player can interact with. And uh, he can tell by a physical state change that he, that he succeeded. He, he, the, the, the shrunken head will catch the ball. A drop target will fall. It's self-educating. And because he feels good about it, he does it again. So we call it Pavlovian pinball. The, the key is that, uh, as Harry Williams used to say, one of the great designers, the ball is wild. So a little bit of control, a little bit of wildness, and let that player have fun. The fun is just about to begin here at Stern Pinball. The wiring on my machine is complete and the play field is nearly assembled. Next, I'll plunge into my new game and go for a few rounds with a real pinball wizard. When we return to Hands-On History on the History Channel. Welcome back to Hands-On History. Now here we have a nearly completed playing field for a brand new pinball machine. Mechanics are all here, but for this to really work properly, well, it kind of needs a brain. And that's what Don's doing over here. This is the thinking part of the machine. Yes, it is. How does this part talk to the brain? Well, here we have a switch, which when it's activated, sends a signal to the input-output circuit board, which then sends a signal to the central processing unit, and then sends another signal back to the input-output board, and then to the lamp or solenoid, whatever is turned on. So that looks pretty much what you might see inside any computer, yes, right? Yes, it is. This is almost finished. It's just missing one thing, the talking drunken head. Yes. Can I put this on? Yes, you may. It goes right up here, right? Yes. OK. Easy there. And with that, I would pronounce this playing field finished. Every time Stern Pinball begins production of a new game, internet chat rooms frequented by pinball devotees light up with rumors about what's next. I was able to get a top secret peek at a machine that the public won't get to see for quite some time. If you want to see the future of pinball, then you've got to visit the office of Steve Ritchie, pinball designer. He's got something in development right now. Hey, this is the newest thing, huh? You're still working on this. Yes, this is Elvis Presley. This is the second uh, Whitewood, and um, it's coming along very nicely. We are uh, we're, we're testing the game and trying to make sure that all the parts will hold up uh, out in the field. And uh, actually, we're checking the fun level. See how fun it is? Are you having fun? I'm having fun. Can you talk to me and play pinball with two balls at the same time? Well, if I can play one ball and talk to you at the same time, I, I just lost that first one there. So this is the first time ever that a, a pinball machine has been done with the Elvis thing. Yes, it is. The music that we have and everything else is a, a very strong draw. There's a, there's a huge fan base for Elvis, and a lot of people that collect pinball machines also our Elvis fan. So there's going to be actual Elvis music like we're hearing right now oh, yeah. as part of this machine. Yeah, seven tunes we've got. But it's Heartbreak Hotel, uh, Jailhouse Rock, oh, yeah. The Best, Hound yeah. Dog, um, I'm All Shook Up, etc. Now is Elvis himself going to be here? Yeah. I mean, in pinball form? Actually, he sits right here. Well, actually, he doesn't sit there. He moves and dances. I have a model here. This is Elvis. By the way, this is not Elvis. This is just a, a plastic toy. But Elvis can, you know, can can talk and and dance and 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 yeah. Well, he's got the Elvis speak moves. To, right. From Humpty Dumpty to the hip shaking king of rock and roll, pinball machines continue to evolve. But outside the factory, there's another key player in the ongoing perfection of this uniquely American game: the pinball wizard. Now we've seen the engineering, the art, and the magic that goes into the making of a pinball machine. Rumor has it there's a real pinball wizard inside. I'm going to go in and see just how good he is. Hey, Keith. Hi, Sorry to interrupt. How are you? <laughs> Very good. They say you're the wizard. I am. Now, i got to tell you something. When I look at a pinball machine, I see this. Gets the ball out there. The flippers, the buttons on the side, to me, the object is to keep the ball from going down here. Right. For you, it's a lot more complex. Absolutely. And a lot more subtle. So kind of show me some of the things that, you know, a, you know, an expert player like yourself would try to do with a machine like this. Okay. Well, first of all, the number one we'll thing is, back. you know, you don't just pull the plunger all the way back. You want to try and get the, play, the ball out onto the play field gently. 
see how the ball just like stopped and I got a chance to shoot it. So can you can actually aim this ball? You right. can pick targets up here? Yes. Right. Once you play the game enough, I know where the ball is going to go every time I shoot it. So I'm not reacting to the ball. I'm expecting the ball to do something. So this is going to start a uh, round for me. This is going to be a multi-ball. You know, practice, practice, practice is the best thing that you can do. So what do you say? Have Ready that for a challenge? Sure. Is it? I've lost it completely. The ball will come out of there. Where? Roller skating. Oh, no. I forgot the nudge. Oh, that would have been a nudge to the right. Give it your best shot. I don't know how you do it. Let's see, Ron, 984,000, Keith, 7,343,000. I bow to the master. Accepted. Well, after bouncing around the magical world of pinball, it's easy to see why this amusement continues to pull the quarters out of pockets of millions. This is self-contained theater. It offers a tactical challenge that many have taken, but few have mastered. And it doesn't look like I'm going to get back on this machine anytime soon. I'm Ron Hazelton. Thanks for watching Hands On History.